In 2011, NERC launched its research programme on long-term co-evolution of life on the planet following a period of engagement with academics around the UK. The major objective of this programme is to support interdisciplinary research to investigate periods of major change in the geological record. This is in order to improve our understanding of the major controls and feedbacks that exist within the Earth system. The programme comprises four major research projects that span a billion years of Earth history. I lead the project on the reinventing of the planet, the Neo-Proterozoic Revolution in oxygenation and biological complexity. So we're really interested to understand the birth of a kind of modern Earth system as we call it where a world with animals and a familiar ecology of complex life forms, that world was created 550-ish million years ago, but it was born out of a time of great environmental turmoil when there were extreme glaciations and we think there was a partial oxygenation of the deep ocean and a possible rise in oxygen in the atmosphere. And all of this played a role in shaping the rise of complex life. So this overall project has sought to integrate uh, paleontology, geochemistry and modelling to try and understand some of the key controls on uh, evolution through probably over a billion years, so right up to the Precambrian-Cambrian boundary. So my part in particular is to uh, undertake fieldwork in Namibia to try and understand the dynamics between the rise of uh, oxygenation um, in the water column and how life, in particular metazoan life, responded to that. Um, I've been collecting uh, geochemical data to try to understand the chemistry of the oceans at the time um, and how the nutrient cycling was, was, um, was uh, behaving. So I'm looking specifically at uh, exceptionally well preserved uh, fossils of these aquatarchs from Norway in phosphorites. And these have been preserved at the cellular level, so you can see uh, structures within the cells uh, shrunk in cytoplasm. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how they were preserved, and uh, why, and exactly why they were preserved, so what the, the environment was like at that time. I'm the project leader for the second of the uh, of the big programmes, and this is the one looking at um, the early evolution of. Uh, modern marine ecosystems and what are the controls on the structure and the fun function of these. Um, and the time period that we're looking at geologically is, is from the Permian, from the late Permian through to the Jurassic. Um, and these are the time of these major extinction events. So there's the end Permian event, the end of the Triassic event. These are major events associated with global warming. And it's through these events that the, the modern groups that dominate the world's oceans today survived and, and radiated. So we have a team looking at, at fish and pelagic ecosystems. Um, we have a team uh, looking at um, geochemistry and trying to sort out the environmental um, proxies for the changes that we see. And then we have other um, members of the team who are looking at the invertebrates, the animals that inhabit the seafloor um, during, during this interval of time. I'm a PhD student at Plymouth University looking at the paleoecology of the late Permian mass extinction event and the subsequent recovery. Hi, I'm Alistair Crane. I'm a paleontologist at the British Antarctic Survey and I'm the principal investigator of one of the four programmes that <coughs> comprise the NERC Life and the Planet programme. And our particular programme focuses on the role of the polar regions and what we can learn in the latter part of the geological record, what we call the Cenozoic Era. And our project has been looking at a rock sequence which is about 70 to 45 million years ago. And we've been looking at life, uh, the record of fossils in both the ocean and on land to see how animals survived at such high latitudes, how they survived the massive extinction event at the end of the Cretaceous, and then how they recovered into the Paleocene. So it's a very exciting project. My research project is actually looking at the detailed fossil records over this time period and we're looking at how life recovered from this mass extinction event that killed off 70% um, of the, the world's species at the time. So um, in 2010 I went to Antarctica and we collected specimens from um, a section of sediments. We collected 6,000 fossils and added them to already 
lots of collections we have, and I've been identifying them and looking for patterns in the extinction and recovery at this time interval. I'm at the University of Oxford and I'm one of the investigators on the Paleopolar project, part of the Life and Planet programme. I'm a geochemist and sedimentary geologist and our project is trying to understand the relationship between biotic and climatic evolution in the high latitudes during the latest Cretaceous and early Cenozoic. Um, I was modelling vegetation climate interactions during past greenhouse climates, so I was focusing on the early Eocene and I was looking at if including vegetation feedbacks in the model would reduce the difference between the model temperatures and the temperatures suggested by data for that time period. Project 4, entitled Descent into the Ice House, is using a combination of new isotopic and paleontological data to assess the role of carbon dioxide in global cooling during the Cenozoic. I am involved in the Descent into the Ice House part of the Life on the Planet project, and as part of my PhD I am looking at how the diversity of ocean plankton has changed through the Eocene global cooling event to try and work out the links between the change in diversity or life and the change in the environment. Researchers who are not directly involved in the programme also see the Life and Planet project as a good opportunity for scientific discussions. I've been coming to the Life and the Planet meetings um, ever since the start of the programme um, and I found them immensely beneficial. Um, they've enabled me to meet with members of the uh, scientific community um, in the UK who I wouldn't have interacted with otherwise um, and it's been really thrilling to see the really big questions in geological science being addressed um, via, the, uh, via the, the meetings and the research that's been funded by the programme. I'm at this uh, Life on the Planet meeting we're holding here. There are presentations from people funded by the programme and people who, who are not and uh, they illustrate a, a wonderful range of approaches to understanding the history of the Earth using uh, approaches from different disciplines, thinking of uh, the whole system in, in a holistic way and it illustrates the great value of continuing funding uh, in this kind of multidisciplinary work. Another main goal of the Life and Planet programme is graduate student and early career research training. The 2012 Spring School at the National Oceanographic Centre in Southampton introduced interdisciplinary co-evolutionary research to participants. The 2013 Life and Planet Spring School took place in Exeter and focused on a combination of biogeochemistry and modelling. The third and final training school took place in July this year at the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology. It was in collaboration with Professor Mao Yan Zhu and focused on the theme of paleoenvironmental research. During these three years, the Life and Planet training workshops have involved 37 senior researchers from the UK and China and have trained more than 70 students. These participants have made connections, formed teams for future research and become good friends. I think it's been a very, very interesting project because it's brought together um, different communities from geosciences that don't always naturally collaborate, particularly modellers with paleontologists, for example. And everybody comes together at spring schools and at other events, and you, can then, you then have a group of researchers who you can talk to who do different projects, and everybody can collaborate together. The Life and Planet programme has been a, a fantastic opportunity to bring together researchers from many different disciplines and allow them um, not only to work on specific um, topics of scientific inquiry, but also to really try and learn from each other and learn about the techniques that we each use and their limitations. I've really enjoyed the Life and Planet programme, um, especially the spring schools, because they've been a great opportunity to network with people, also PhD students in the same situation as me and it's also helped my education to become a good background geologist. We've had specific training events and, and spring schools that have been aimed at the, the younger career researchers, which have been really helpful. They've involved lectures and also um, we've given presentations and been on field trips and had lots of different discussions. It's felt like we've had a little community working together and when we see each other at meetings it's always fun to catch up with people and see how their research has progressed. Oh, the most memorable um part of this program has probably been um, the entertaining meetings we've had together, the kind of social occasions in which we've talked about science and had a lot of fun. And we've come up with creative new ideas um, because of the 
willingness of everybody to to come to a common problem together and try and solve it.